I begin with both, if it is to be said, because this sentence can be used as a quote. There are certain questions in response to that I will be speaking on consciousness and also some time ago I spoke on sex, the essential code energy for transformation. It is important issue on which much more needs to be spoken. There is a lot of problems arising because of lack of understanding of the, this. It affects, affects the male-female relation and many other things. In that series I will speak on certain topics, levels of sex energy, the cycles of sex energy and relationship between marriage and in life God never gives you people you want remember in life God never gives you people you want certainly he cannot even if he may want to because he really loves you in life God never gives you people you want certainly he cannot even if he may want to because he loves you instead he gives you people to be around instead he gives you people to be around you need in the process of transformation of consciousness and thus transcendence he assigns people around you to teach you the way of the beyond and to hurt you so that you learn to love you and grow in consciousness. He assigns people around you to teach you the way of the beyond so that you can be fed up with the mundane life and move on to the beyond. He assigns people around you to teach you the way of the beyond and to hurt you so that you learn to love you and grow in consciousness. Be creative so that you can create your awareness every moment and make you exactly the way he wants you to be the Buddha, the best. Therefore, love to be. Indeed, you are prey of existence. Indeed, you are prey of existence. There are several questions. First question has to be, rephrased to make it easy to understand and then speak. How can one be in deep committed relationship with anything without being attached to it? How can one be in a deep committed relationship with anything without becoming attached to it. Is not attachment and intensity of relationship the same? This is, this cannot be treated together. The questions go on mushrooming out of the mind. But it has to be responded differently. Is the answer then to deny or pretend while secretly detaching oneself from anything or are these questions simply born out of natural inclination of aversion? Should one assume that the relationship with everything is the same as the relationship with the master? and other relationships are kind of function of it. 
In other words, the relationship with the master is used to interpret all others or a means by which to understand all others. It is a set of questions. How can one be in deep committed relationship with anything without becoming attached to it? What is that brings the attachment? It is the function of the mind and that of the body and its consciousness that brings the attachment. Man continues to live by the mind and its instincts. There are five sense organs and mind is the sixth organ. And all our consciousness is that of the mind. You will recall the important sutra from Bhagavad Gita which is the last sutra that Krishna spoke to Arjun. Sarva dharmana paritijya mamikam sharnam raja aham tam sarva papibhyo moksha shyamima shucha Abandon all religions. What does religion mean? There is one God but there are many religions. There is one science, not a Hindu science or a Jew science. There is one electricity, it functions in one way. Whether you follow Jew's religion, Christianity, Roman Catholicism, Presbyterianism, Shouter Baptist, Vedanta or any other religion but science exists as a solitary unit for each one of the human beings. Why there are so many religions? <clears throat> These religions exist because the frame of the mind of each individual is different. We live by the mind. It is said, as is the mind, so is the man. There are many such statements which are incorrect. A statement like, eat little and live long. Should it mean that when you eat nothing, you can live forever? Eat little and live long. It is said and very often it is used. By the people who are sleeping, who are not awake. This is an incorrect and insensitive statement. Immediately it comes, if you eat nothing, you will live forever. No. It is a consolation for those people who do not have anything. Who do not have the platter, the full platter of food in front of them. So they console themselves by saying, eat little and live long. Albert Einstein is rep reported to have said, two things are infinite. One is the world and the other is human stupidity. Two things are infinite, the world and human stupidity. Of these, we are not sure about the first, the infiniteness of the world, but certainly the human stupidness is infinite and we live by that. When you look at it, stupidity differs. The basic nature is the same. Man lives by the mind. One is a Hindu mind, Christian mind or many minds. Some says that this is the way and, and each one of these followers claim that their way is the only way, the only authentic way and all other ways are false. We 
live by this. This is the mind, the culture of the mind. And Krishna, when he is giving his graduation speech to Arjuna, graduation speech to Arjuna, he says, Sarva Dharmana Paritikya. Abandon all the religions. Religions of the body. What is the religion of the mind? Is thinking, thoughts. What is the religion of the body? Guided by instincts. I see the form but eyes cannot hear. Aids hear but cannot see or feel. So on and so forth, all different sense organs and organs of perception. Ooh. And mind is full of thoughts and turbulence. It makes the decision on the basis of the memory, not of the consciousness. Mind has nothing to do with con. It only thinks and lives by the memory of the thoughts, previous experiences. And no experience can be old. Each time when a circumstance and situation comes, it always comes in a new way. Sarvadharmana paritijya, mamikam sharanamaraja. Abandon all the religions of the body, mind and intellect. Come to me and me alone. Buddham sharanam gacchama. I come to the, sh to the refuge of the enlightened. Dhamam Sharanam Gachan, the essential religiousness to its refuge I come to. Sangham Sharanam Gachami, the commune of the Buddha and the commune of this religiousness I come. What does Buddha represent? Buddha represents a Buddha nature, a Buddha consciousness which is undivided, which is of totality, which is existential. This is when Krishna says, Sarva Dharmana Paritijya Mami Kam Sharnam Praja Aham Tam Sarupati Bhyo Moksha Sham Mahasuja Come to me and me alone. I shall liberate thee of all the sins of thy mortal existence. What does Krishna represent? A Hindu God? A incarnation, propounder of Bhagavad Gita, the architect of Mahabharat. No, Krishna represents the totality of consciousness. The totality of consciousness when there is no conflict, there is harmony both within and without, and you live by that harmony. Bliss is the outcome of this harmony. You are blissful living in harmony. This is consciousness. This is totality of awareness. And this comes through mindfulness. The entire epitome of Buddha's teaching, the teaching of Buddha is mindfulness. Begin your journey with mindfulness. Then you can be in a deep committed relationship and yet be totally unattached. There had been examples of the Buddhas. They set the examples. They created the code of conduct for you to follow through their examples. Be it Junnath, be it Buddha, be it Ramakrishna. I can go on giving you the examples which I spoke from time to time. And awareness means putting these examples together to answer, to understand a particular question that comes to the human mind. Junad had son. Son used to be sick and was sickly. The wife, and he loved his son dearly. The wife thought Junad cannot live without the son. And when the son will die, as it was expected that he may die any time, 
Jannat will break down. One day it happened, the son died. But nothing happened to Jannat. The wife washed, nothing happened to him. He remained the same way. She thought maybe because people are around, that's why Buddha, that's why Jannat is like this. Nothing happened to Jannat. Everyone gone, Jannat was alone. Nothing happened according to the expectation of his wife. She asked Jannat, I thought you loved your son dearly. He said, yes, I loved him dearly. So she said, I thought that you cannot live without his son. You may break down. Jannat responded beautifully. That is the reply, that is the understanding of a Buddha, of an awakened one. And an example for you all to live. How to live? How to live in a committed relationship and yet be totally detached from it. He said, for a moment I thought that the son has died. But then a thought gripped me, the awareness gripped me. I was happy when the sun was not. Once I was all alone and I was happy and blissful because my happiness is not dependent on any particular circumstance, situation or person. It is the outcome of my own inner harmony and oneness, the understanding, the awakening. Bliss is always the shadow of awakening. If there is inner awakening, that means Ishawasyamidam Sarvam Yat Kinchi Jagatyan Jagat. The entire cosmos is permeated by oneness, the consciousness. And if we understand this and live by this, then we can reap the fruits of the existence. All that is there, the breeze, the sun, anything that is available in the existence is for you. With this awareness, you can live by that. You can enjoy the fruits of all that manifests out of this consciousness. Lao Tzu says, Tao is one. And when it expresses itself, there are 10,000 things. This is a parable to say that myriad things comes into existence. You can live by all these and yet be happy and blissful. And it will not affect your blissfulness. Because you are blissful out of your own reason, not because of sun or because of money, because of house, because of wife, because of anything else. You are blissful because of that. And if you are not blissful because of any reason, then you are swinging between the duality. You are under the wheel of the duality. Kabir says, Chalti chakki dekkar diya kabira roi. Looking at the grinding stone, Kabir burst into tears. Chalti chakki dekkar Looking at the grinding wheel, Kabir cried. Chalti chakki dek kabir dek kabira ro dui patan ke beech me sabit bachana koi. How can you remain intact within the two wheels, two grinding wheels? Jorahe keel sahare so kaise pishchan? Those who remain stick to the axe, there are certain grains that get. They filter and reach to the axle and they remain intact without grinding. Once you know what is your axle and consciousness is your axle, you live by consciousness, then no duality, no grinding wheel can affect you, can grind you and you will be totally detached. You will live in the world, but the world will not be within you. 
you will live into the world but the world will not be within you because you are living by your consciousness jurnath said i live by my consciousness in a harmony and oneness i was happy when i was alone then you came into my life apparently the happiness increased instead of one they were two to share the inner happiness with i shared this inner happiness and bliss with you then the sun was born i shared this inner oneness and happiness with him too and you remember the children are born through you not from you they are the gift of the existence they come through you they are not your property simply you are given an opportunity to nourish and nurture the consciousness just as master is given an opportunity to nourish and nurture the consciousness of all those who come in this world share with him his blissfulness and this is what kali said in the prophet when al mitra asked al mustafa the master what about the children children are born through you not from you give them your love not your mind mind they will have of their own but instead of love because we have never experienced lovingness in our lives how can we share something that we do not have and we consider attachment as our love and it is because of attachment the problem comes in it is because of the lack of understanding of love many problems come in and questions like this how can one be in deep committed relation with anything without becoming attached to it comes indeed one can and one is bound to one can be in a committed relationship with anything without being attached there is no obligation for me to come in the morning on the weekend for this morning meditations yet still i can because there is nothing for me to attain to this talk yet still i engage in action ceaselessly cause men follow my path they lean towards this lean towards these meditations so that they can grow into a virus indeed the relationship with the master helps you becomes the commune and in that commune in that energy field you grow in awareness you know the aspects of duality you learn not to be grinded by the wheel of duality instead to go beyond junad lived in a committed relationship but he was not committed relationship with his son because he was committed to allow him to grow into awareness he was not attached the moment you are guided by your awareness there will be commitment but no attachment there will be commitment but no attachment in one of the lines of kabir man ke mate na chaliye man ke mate ani do not go by the way of the mind the ways and of the mind that myriad live by the way of consciousness and where does what is the seat of consciousness when the energy of the mind comes to the realm of the heart which is existential you are born with the heart and a faculty to discern not the faculty of thinking faculty to discern to go beyond to understand the faculty of meditativeness when you are hearing a person and you are seeing what is that 
coordinates that the person that you are hearing and the person that you are seeing is the same. It is the dhyan, it is the meditation, it is the consciousness, it is the awareness that makes you certain that the person that you are hearing and the person that you are seeing is the same. This is dhyan. Through meditation, you grow into awareness and then every circumstance and every situation that comes around you is for you to learn to love you and grow in consciousness. Then you can understand in life God never gives you people you want. It never gives you circumstances and situation you want. Certainly he cannot even if he may want to. Because he really loves you, instead he gives you people to be around. You need in the process of transformation of consciousness and thus transcendence. He assigns people around you to teach you the way of the beyond and to hurt you so that you can learn to love you and grow in consciousness. He assigns people around you to teach you the way of the beyond, the way of consciousness, the way of Buddhas, the psychology of the Buddhas. And to hurt you, the world and its dualities, so that you can learn to love yourself instead of loving others. And by loving yourself, by growing into your inner sanctum, you grow into consciousness. And then one day all of a sudden, the harmony comes and bliss explodes within you. Then you can be in a deep committed relation with anything. You can be in a relationship with the body, with your objects and yet still you can be without any attachment. One day you was totally attached in harmony with your youth, your childhood body, childhood understanding. As you grew in consciousness, you are no more, you grew up into youth. You attain to youth. In youth you are no more at, attached to childlike talks, childlike prattles, childlike body. You have outgrown that and so is the attachment outgrown. This is natural. You do not have to make any effort for this or ask a question. How can I remain an unattached to my childhood body, childhood understanding and talks when I am youth or when I will grow into youth? The question comes out of the mind. If you allow the natural process to go on, if you continue to grow into awareness through the way of mindfulness. You are mindful of every circumstance and situation. You are aware in every circumstance and situation. When you are talking to someone, when you are engaging in your day-to-day -day office work, remember the statement of William Shakespeare, none so while upon this earth that live. Everyone has something good. None so while upon this earth that live, everyone has something good to give. Every circumstance and situation is there for you to come closer to that, to zero in into that consciousness that is the very essence of your existence. The consciousness that you are born with. The consciousness that is your fruition, then there is no such question to arise because you have allowed to live by the way of consciousness. 
you are living moment to moment then you will be in the world but the world will not be in you you will live like a lotus that grows and grows into mud but it is unaffected by it it is there as far as its nourishment is concerned because it must draw its nourishment from the lake water and the mud that is at the ground it draws its nourishment from there and transcends everything and remains unattached remains unattached to its origin it is thankful to the lake water that it is giving it the nourishment every circumstance and situation and the people around you gives you nourishment but you continue to live like a lotus in the lake a lotus in the lake unattached to any circumstance and situation it continues to shine its beauty and a splendor and it is considered to be the symbol of a spirituality lotus with the diamonds be it buddhist tradition be it hindu tradition be it any tradition of the east lotus is a symbol of non attachment a buddha teaches you the way of lotus how to be in the world and be not of the world how to live in a committed relationship and yet not be committed to anything yet not be attached to anything is not attachment in tests and intensity of relation the same thing this is coming out of the mind your emphasis is on relationship making it stationary let it be a flow like a river because you can never enter into the same river twice relationship is a river that is continuously flowing it is the way of relating the way of relating is very important you can relate moment to moment according to the circumstance and situation that comes to in front of you guided by your awareness you are responding to that relating to that particular situation as guided by your awareness then there can be no attachment is not attachment an intensity of relation the same should i say this is the question this is the outcome of lack of understanding it is not the intensity of relationship it is the understanding of relationship and attachment is the same thing understanding of relationship because you have considered in a relationship as a stationary that is why there is attachment you are you have considered a particular circumstance and situation as a stationary you continue to live by the memory this is attachment attachment is living by the memory is the answer then to deny or pretend while secretly detaching oneself from everything or are these questions simply out of natural inclination of the aversion no it is not outcome of the natural inclination of aversion it is the outcome of mind and memory and your conditionings then you do not have to make any pretend or make any secret effort of detaching oneself from everything you will once you are living by awareness once you are living mindfully you will perform your duty with total commitment and yet still you will not be attached to anything i am not saying you will not be committed you will be committed to every circumstance and situation just as a buddha is committed to each one of his followers that comes in his contact buddha has is reported to have said in diamond sutra prajna paramita hridayam sutra that 
I will not enter the kingdom of heaven until each and every one, the sentient and sentient men, women, and everyone attain to enlightenment. This is commitment, but it is not attached. Such is the only commitment that Buddhas can make. Then there is no need secretly detaching oneself. Buddha is not attached to anyone when it is time for him to leave. He consciously decided to leave. When you look at the life of Krishna, he was so much attached to the milk maids that every evening, every morning, every night he is dancing on the banks of the Blue River in the moonlight with, with the milkmaids and rejoicing. But all of a sudden, but his, when his responsibility, when his work with the milkmaids finished and he had to go elsewhere, he moves without any attachment. The milkmaids were in the process attached to him, but Krishna was not attached to any one of them. This is an example of the total non-attachment, total detachment every circumstance and situation that once you love so dearly. This is the way of the Buddhas, the way of Jumnats, the way of Ram Krishna. He was totally detached with the pain that was inflicted upon him. The pain that was inflicted upon him because of the throat cancer. He and his body were totally detached. It is not the way that we can learn from how to be in the world and be not attached to it. Is the answer then to deny or pretend while secretly detaching oneself from everything or these questions simply born of natural inclination of aversion? No. These questions do not born out of the natural inclination of aversion but natural inclination of the mind its thought process and conditionings. Should one assume that the relationship with everything is the same as with the master? No, it is not. The relationship with the master is based on consciousness and relationship on the, with the others is based on attachment. You can use the relationship with the master as the guiding principle for all your relationship because the relationship with the master is not relationship it is the way to relate it is the way to grow into awareness it is the way to attain to inner harmony and oneness and this can be your guiding principle because the master is a presence is an energy you can relate to him but you cannot establish any relationship with him. He is simply a formless presence. In his form, he is formless. He exists without a form. How can you relate to something that is formless? How can you relate? Where, where does the form come from? Form comes from the thoughts. He is not the body yet still he is the body. He is not the mind, yet still he is the mind because he is using the mind to communicate whatever is to be communicated. I am speaking, the sentences are forming out of the mind and understanding of the language, understanding the anatomy and physiology of the words. But I am not the word. I am the silence that surrounds between the two words. A master is the silence that reveals between. When a word comes and after that another word comes, there is a gap. This gap is the silence. This gap is the presence that the master is. This gap is the formlessness that the master is. Continued. And it is this gap, it is this silence that prevails between the two words, maybe of a very infinitesimal time. But it is this that can become the guiding principle, it can become the essence of all other relationships. Should one assume that the relationship with everything is same? No, it is not the same, but it can become the very essence of all other relationships. All other relationships can be based on this way the master relates to you, the way you relate to the master. It can become the essence. 
In other words, the relationship with the master is used to interpret others. No, it is not used to interpret. Instead, it is to create an understanding. It is the understanding how one should relate to the others. How one should relate to the others. The master exists around you as a presence. Whether you are with me physically or not, but the presence surrounds you. Anything that is there reminds you not of my presence, but instead it reminds you of my formless presence, my energy field. The words continue to echo like the dissolving notes of a sweet enchanting melody, enchanting consciousness in you. And it is this that guides you in the moments of despair and despondency. When a relationship comes, you learn to relate. Relate to the people moment to moment. This moment and then live by whatever instinct comes totally. You look at the child, his anger is total. When he is angry, he is totally angry. And his anger is not guided by anything else. And next moment, the anger is no more. There is lovingness. Look at the, in the existence. One moment there is heavy rain and next moment there is sun. The rain and the sun are not related to one another. Instead it is part of the way of the existence. Why does rain come? We, if we understand when there is clouds converged and they are full with the rain cloud water they cannot contain it within its womb and the earth's atmosphere makes it shower. The moment all that water is showered, the sun shines, the clouds are no more. One moment there is anger because the cloud of gloominess was there and the moment anger is over but we cannot linger on that day. The way that you relate to the master teaches you how to live moment to moment. When anger comes, live into that moment. But do not allow it to remain its after effects. The energy had flowed. The, the autumn has come. It is needed in the process of the growth of the tree. In winter, if autumn does not come, the leaves do not fall. The nourishment will not be there, the tree will not be protected with the heavy snow and then the snow falls. Because there are no leaves, the tree is bare, the snow just slides down and the tree remains unaffected by the it's falling snow, by the thunderstorms or anything like that. Can't you learn from that? That the autumn has come, the leaves have fallen, and the leaves that fall, that they gather around the tree, they save the tree from any kind of cold, the snow that is falling, that may fall during the wind, upcoming winter season, and the leaves that fall, that decay and provide nourishment to the tree. Autumn is always followed by spring. New foliage, new branches, everything new, the tree is resurrected. Relate into a particular circumstance and situation, be it autumn, be it spring, be it any season. But then as soon as the season change, move to the other. The tree never feels hurt that God has made all the leaves fall. The tree rejoices the autumn. That is why, that is why autumn is so beautiful and you invite sometimes your friends to visit you during the month of, during the season of autumn when the leaves have turned gold. That's what we call. We do not call they are fading, they are drying. We call them the leaves turn gold. The entire tree is gold. The leaves turn gold and we have the images of the autumn season. It has its beauty. So too, 
the anger when it is lived totally it is not anger it is a season of autumn that has come and when autumn is gone the spring will come this is the way of buddhas this is the way to relate then this is the and this understanding of the buddhas will become the yardstick the guiding principle to live in the world and be not of the world relate to any circumstance and situation or person sentient or insentient with total commitment and in that you will go beyond that total commitment with awareness is the way to beyondness is the way to detachment you will always be detached why are you you are never satiated with anything that you do whether you relate to someone or you are in a relationship or you are going to eat something you are never satiated that's why there is hunger you again you are hungry again and you will be when you live with awareness awareness is the cessation awareness cessates and then when you are fully cessated you can relate but there is no need of any relationship with husband wife children the outer world or anything then you can say like krishna na me partha asti trishuloki shukinchana i have nothing to do in the three universe yet still i engage in action ceaselessly why because men follow my path then you can engage in anything that you see around you because men follow my path. I have nothing to gain in the three universe. I have nothing to gain while when I am talking to you all committedly. Is it not my commitment to come to you every Saturday, Sunday and Monday and other days and speak to you? Is it not the commitment to have the monthly magazines and the quarterly journals ready in time? This is the commitment. there is no gain for me through this the my only gain is that you attain to your buddha that you attain to your flowering this is not attachment this is it cannot be called as an attachment when time comes you want to leave the body as if it never exists it is like changing clothes you do not lament when the childhood disappeared and you entered into you because it is a continuity every circumstance and situation is part of the totality it is a continuity this is the way of the spirituality the way of the masters the way of buddhas how can you when i someone asked how can one be in a deep committed relationship with anything without becoming attached to it indeed you can live by the way of awareness mindfully moment to moment as it comes totally you will certainly attain to that state of non attachment in attachment you will be the part of the world but the world will not be part of you 